your eyes for a minute and imagine food, glorious food. Take a closer look and see those wondrous colors of yellow, orange, and red. Food that tantalizes your test birds and awakens your appetite with a whiff of sweet scented steam. Such is the effect that sweet peppers give to a star-fried meal. Its delicate nature makes it expensive to grow. However, this has not deterred some of our farmers from producing it for a niche market that craves exotic tastes. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. They are not grown by every farmer. So I wanted to use that avenue to grow something that is new to me but uh, also not grown by everybody so that I could get some kind of good market. Rebecca Senkubuge Aza, a former boutique owner, has traded her stilettos for gamboots. She's nurturing her dream of becoming a horticulture exporter. Rebecca has had a number of career changes in her effort to keep herself motivated. She has worked as a literature teacher for over 10 years at Kampala International School and Aga Khan School before going into the apparel business. She currently grows six varieties of sweet pepper on her field. Golden Sand, Greenhouse, Sourced Locally, Canario, Imported from Brazil, Topaz, Imported from Brazil, Batian, Imported from Brazil, Midred, F1, Sourced Locally, Nemalit F1 sourced locally. At home, um, after my apparel business was down, I still had to do something to keep busy. So I started making little kitchen gardens at home. The LC1 chairman used to pass by and he would like the gardens. And every time he came, I would be in the garden. And then he was like, hey, you're so passionate about this. And then one time he invited me for a meeting for nuds in that community, in my village. Then I was walking back from the meeting and I was with one of the members at the meeting. And she told me that I have a greenhouse. You could come and have a look. So I go to her home, I enter the greenhouse and she had tomatoes. I asked her so many questions. What's a greenhouse? Where did you buy it? Where, what does it cost? What does it do? How do the yield? So many questions. Then she was going to do a transplant, like in a week's time. And I offered to go transplant for her. I went and did the transplant. We finished the house. There was a guy who was helping her and she was, and that guy was from Balton. And then she introduced him and said, this guy comes and helps me once in a while when I have problems or what. So I also got his contact. Then after like a month, I went back and the fruits were big. The plants were very big and they had fruits. Then I went back on the second month, the fruits were much bigger. One and a half months, she called me and told me, we are harvesting. And I said, I told myself, okay, I think I can do a greenhouse. And then I spoke to that gentleman, Bosco, and he encouraged me, yeah. He came and looked at my place at home. And we looked at a smaller greenhouse and he was like, yes, you can put it here. Rebecca's husband is a consultant who travels often. She shares with him her ambitions and he supports her, especially where he sees great commercial viability. And he encouraged her to convert their 1.42 acre property located near Garuga into a farm. When buying a greenhouse in Uganda, the purchase is more than just the structure. Rebecca's kit came with a number of things. We were given a kit. It's a greenhouse kit or a farming kit, which comprises of a structure. This structure has this steel, the steel skeleton, plus the material that covers it. It has that kind of like a polythene, which has been structured really to fit the conditions of greenhouse farming. And it has this netting, which also supports that. And part, the other components are the drip line, the drip line uh, system, which is this one here. It is already punched, and it is punched at 30 centimeters. There is a small hole there, and at every 30 centimeters you put a plant, 
and once you open the water outside they all get irrigated at the same time it also comes with the seeds that we used for the first crop um, that's about 1200 seeds so it also comes with uh, fertilizers it comes with uh, fungicides and pesticides additional costs not covered in the greenhouse kit include the foundation a roll of plastic mulch the planting bags the soil so whether an individual or a group you should look at spending about 30 million Ugandan shillings for the entire setup there are some inputs that you're not given as part of the kit which you're supposed to have on the ground for example putting the the, the structure into place you need aggregate stones you need cement you need labor and some other little things like some of the wiring and stuff like that just a few Rebecca's farming property is divided into four parts the greenhouse the open field which is 36 by 33 meters the operation area the workers quarters the store the store sterilization unit and the used soil dump her farming model includes both the greenhouse as well as open field farming she's currently integrating both organic and chemical agri inputs with an intention to fully transition to organic farming once the crops adapt well so we started doing this greenhouse and uh, the little open field we're doing not as a, a, a play thing but we had the vision to expand into export that is where i want to go i want to export this crop growing sweet pepper has been a journey of discovery Rebecca has had to fast track her learning by using online resources as well as experimenting. So I had to start by learning how to grow it. I had to start by researching it. I do a lot of reading. So I started by reading about paper. I, I started by watching videos on YouTube of, of who is doing sweet peppers. I did a lot of YouTube videos in India, they were using local materials and uh, the, the local materials, they built greenhouses and the communities got helped. Apart from reading, consulting and watching online tutorial videos, actual farming has opened up a whole new world for Rebecca. I had gone to the shelves in the supermarket and seen that there, there is uh, sweet pepper. I don't even remember eating it, but somehow I got drawn to sweet pepper. And I, I did some research, I found them on the shelves in the supermarket and I also got to know that people who have this kind of lifestyle like things like these and they are not grown by every farmer so I wanted to use that avenue to grow something that is new to me but uh, also not grown by everybody so that I could get some kind of good market. So. I'm doing paper now, I want to do it tomorrow. I have where I sell it today, but I want to export it. Because this house can house up to 1,152 plants. When we return on Seeds of Gold, we'll learn more about Rebecca's farm operations and the conditions of her sweet peppers. Some of the challenges of open field farming is what we call scorch. A walk through the rows of plants gives us an insight on her expanding knowledge of sweet pepper. When you're setting up the greenhouse, the first thing you do is to first of all locate a place which is supposed to be flat. If it is tilting, uh, some of the crops on the higher end of the greenhouse will not receive water. So you get a flat area, um, then they build a structure over it, then you start making the, the beds. These are called beds, we call them beds. So you make the beds with, walk, with a walkway. The bed is supposed to be one meter and the, the walkway is supposed to be half a meter. And then cover them with the plastic mulch. Why do you cover them with plastic mulch? Because there could be bacterial wilt in the soil. So the next thing after covering the plastic mulch, you, ha you have already started steaming your soil in the steaming kit, which we shall look at outside. After steaming the soil, 
you pack it in the planting bags. Then you ferry those planting bags from the steaming area and put them over the covered bed, making sure that there's no contamination between the steamed soil and the unsteamed area, any other unsteamed area. So after setting those uh, the, the beds with the planting bugs, then you bring the drip irrigation line and put it on. You set it and then you put the bugs according to how the drip line has been punched. So the hole is supposed to be in the middle of the bug. Once that is done, by that time, you, your crop is ready. You will have planted your seeds somewhere already in the nursery. By the time of finishing to set up all the bugs have soil, you now start transplanting. And then you set up something like this. From the very beginning, if you choose to water at 8 o'clock on day one, you're supposed to water at 8 o'clock for the rest of the lifespan of the plant. So since we water three times a day, we water from 8 to 8.30, 30 minutes. Then from 12 to 12.30, 30 minutes. Then from uh, 3 to 3.30. Once the, the crop grows up to about uh, 10 centimeters high, it has already started flowering and fruiting. And once it flowers and fruits, it becomes heavy. You so you support the plant by making these trellises. So you put the trellis on some line down there, which is not the drip, but this uh, galvanized wire. It is a galvanized wire, this one. So you tie the trellis on, on that wire and then you take it round one branch. If it is a tomato, it's only one branch throughout. But pepper can break out into three branches. You trellis each and every branch. When you start harvesting, you harvest on the lower part and the upper part is still bringing fruit. The more you harvest down here, the more room and vigor you give the plant to, to shoot up and bring more flowers, therefore more fruits. This is ready. It can go on the shelf. It's ready for eating. And uh, if you harvest it, we are encouraged to harvest the fruit at a uh, uh, color breakage of between 40 and 60 percent because if you harvest it when it is completely yellow like this it doesn't have a very long shelf life but if you harvest it like um, let me just show you one which is not completely maybe like this one here if you harvest it like this some yellow and some green on it um, it can stay for up to 21 days on the shelf when you're setting up the greenhouse, you are supposed to have a foot bath at the entrance. Put in it water mixed with some jig. We use jig. So every time somebody is coming into the greenhouse, you're supposed to step in that foot bath for some time, maybe one or two minutes, and make sure that your your utter, your shoes or gumboots are covered in that water. Then you step in. In that way, you will have disinfected yourself. As soon as you enter a greenhouse, you have to close yourself in as soon as, as fast as you can to protect the crop from the environment also that you're not sure of. We have um, insects like aphids and white flies. When they come in, they sit on the leaves and they are very, very dangerous to the fruit. Rebecca has had a number of setbacks, both structure and for her crops. As far as the structure is concerned, it had an opening that did not work for us here. Like if the temperatures go high, we were supposed to roll it open so that the heat goes out. But I think there was a structure default. And we informed the guys in Bauton, they informed the manufacturer in Israel, they came over and they asked us to close that opening. Being a uh, on having a waterfront there's a lot of wind that comes in so some of the materials they were using to hold um, to hold this down to hold it back so that the water doesn't come in when it rains you're not supposed to have rain coming in but because of the wind some of these materials holding were not able to hold it in place uh, in terms of the the seed we got a I got a bad seed at the beginning which which took off half of the greenhouse the half of the greenhouse all died. I think the seed 
was gotten from a plant that already had some bacterial infection. She has had to plant a new bunch of crops and use sweet pepper varieties from different suppliers in Uganda and beyond. Variety is a canary from Brazil and it's this big, very, very big. Um, I sell all my, my, my fruits in kilos, so it works for me. If I have those small ones, I'll have to put so many to get a kilo. But if I have these, maybe I'll put five or three or five or, or six to make a kilo. Her current challenge is inconsistent supply of water. Her reliance on national water supply is threatening the quality of her yield. She spends between 150,000 Ugandan shillings to 200,000 Ugandan shillings on a 10,000 liter tank boozer that lasts her three days. Depending on the weather, she uses roughly 1,000 liters for the greenhouse and the open field takes 3,000 liters. You must have water. The plants must take in this water. One of the things that you, is the requirement for you to have on your site is two water points. One is a water reservoir and then the other one is the feeding system. So I came and put up this water reservoir here. We started experiencing problems of water and when I asked around they told me that because the places are becoming urbanized, um, the pipes that were laid then are small, they give little pressure. So now National Water wants to have been told by somebody who works in National Water that this area they are planning to lay bigger pipes so that now the pressure is good for everybody who is because the place is, is uh, developing. So what do I do? I have to invest in buying water. I buy a bowser, a 10,000 litre bowser and fill up this. This crop now takes about 10,000 litre every two days or maybe three days. That means I have to go into this cost of buying a 10,000 litre tank or, or bowser every other, maybe twice a week. That is an expenditure that I did not anticipate and I need to take care of. In this age of digital progression, Rebecca is not limiting the use of her smartphone to simple social interactions. Every time I'm here, I take a photo. I take photos of, of the crop, I zoom in, I zoom out. When I want to look at a particular problem, I zoom in and then I send it to my agronomists because that's what they say. You don't have to call us, just take a picture and send. So I use that that avenue to also just collect my pictures and I've been sharing them. On the little platforms, the small platforms I have, but I'm so shocked that this, 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 they've gone beyond and beyond what I expected. So ICT has helped me in that way, but also the YouTube thing. I have invested a lot of money in, in bundles. I've bought a lot of airtime, a lot, a lot. I don't even know how much because I don't cost it. But I don't regret because I have a lot. I, I think now I have some good knowledge for myself, but also that I can share with. If somebody came here and asked me about paper, I can give them some information I have. And the good thing with crops is that it, it, some, most of the times it cuts across. What you know on this can help somebody in their tomato. It can help somebody on their other crop. So that is how uh, ICT has helped me. Her crop takes two and a half months to bear fruit and she has since harvested over 2,000 kilograms. She last planted in the greenhouse on 1st June 2016 while the field was in August 2016. She is likely to replace the greenhouse crop in January 2017. Since this is a new project, she is yet to break even but the projections look good and her clients keep coming back for more. In agriculture, you must be patient. Agriculture is not something you're going to invest in today and get tomorrow. And if you do that, you're deceiving yourself. And then you also have to be very knowledgeable. Read hard about, about this thing that you want to do. In terms of sweet pepper, I read and I still read and I still want to read. I now know that I can have red pepper I know that I can have yellow pepper, but I know that there's orange, there's purple, there's white, there's black. 
Maybe there is even another color that I don't know, but I know that those colors are there and I'm going to have them here. When we return on Seeds of Gold, we talk to Mwanga Chigundu of Nongama on the growing market for exotic crops and George Makumbi on how to plan your farm on one acre of land. <laughs> 